Well, hello there. Um, welcome to this Monday's Paint Along. Um, my name is Allie, if you are new here. Uh, I do these live paint alongs every Monday at five Eastern, and I teach a free hour long um, sample. So we do these small eight by 10 samples. We've been working our way through a little holiday series, and today is the Holiday Lights Paint Along. So we're going to do this little ornament painting. I have the outlines on my panel already ready to go, and I'm going to do this whole painting um, start to finish in the next hour. Um, I see a bunch of you are jumping into the demo here. Uh, please feel free to say hi in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Dawn in Sydney, British Columbia. Welcome. I uh, can't wait to see your painting. Um, and let me just kind of go through real quick with how this works. So um, I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do the whole painting start to finish tonight. And um, I also have many of you that paint right along with me. So some of you guys paint live, um, some of you watch the demo and you paint afterwards. But what I did is I put together a little template for you to print on your home printer and uh, trace onto your panel. I use transfer paper to do that. So if that's something you're interested in, you can find that download on my website, alliekstudio.com. That's just $10 um, to print off that demo. So some of you are gonna be painting with me live, some of you are gonna be painting later, um, and I hope all of you will share your paintings in my group, Allie's Paint Friends, because I love to see what you guys do. Um, hi, Brenda in Alberta, Canada. Hi, Jacqueline in Ohio. Hi, Brenda. Oh, and thank you. Brenda said happy birthday. So today is my birthday, guys, um, and I get to spend it here with you uh, doing this little painting. So one of my favorite things to do, painting and teaching, so win-win for me. Um, hi, Debbie, and thank you very much. All right, so let's get started on this painting. I'm excited for this one. So here is what we are painting. And if you have been on my email list, you might wanna check your email because I sent this demo out to my full email list. Uh, let's see, it was on Monday or Tuesday last week. Um, I sent you the download for free this week because I know that I sent a lot of emails over Black Friday weekend and I just kinda wanted to say thank you for sticking with me um, through all of those extra emails. I know that your, uh, your email inboxes were probably very full. So as a little thank you, I, got, I sent you guys this demo free. So check that out uh, if you haven't already. All right, so I am just pulling up, I'm pulling up on my other screen uh, the demo here so I can follow along your comments. Um, so I've got my outlines on here. I went over these after transferring them with a uh, purple using my skinny little script liner brush. And I made the purple from Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, and White. And I am using Golden Fluid Acrylics, in case you are wondering. These are my paints of choice. If you get the download that has the outlines, you will um, also get a list of the paint colors that I use. So you can watch for that. Um, okay, now I'm seeing all your comments now that I've got it pulled up here. All right, hi Kay, hi Matty. All right, hello everyone. Okay, so first thing we do to kick off every demo is um, we start finding the shadows. So I'm going to make a purple from Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray. I'm going to water them down quite a bit. Uh, I like to use these two colors because they make a nice kind of muted purple, which works really nice for finding shadows. Um, so purple works as a neutral. Uh, I generally use purple instead of gray most of the time because purple's prettier and more interesting, right? All right, so I've got this nice soupy puddle here on my palette. And I'm just gonna blot my brush here. Uh, hi, Julie in Georgia. We have so many people on the demo tonight, I love it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to 
look at the lines that we have here and we're gonna ask ourselves which side of the line is light and which side is dark, okay? So um, as I'm looking at my reference image, I can see that we've got a dark shadow, kind of a triangular shaped shadow coming in right here. So I'm just washing this in. My paint's really, really thin, so that gets it to flow really nice. Um, and I did not outline every single needle, you'll notice. I just kind of got like some of the major shapes because I'm just trying to get a general feel for the shapes that we've got going here. So I, uh, I would have had so much busyness if I had outlined like every single shape. So I just kind of got some like directional lines going there um, to give myself a little bit of a roadmap as I'm going through here. All right, moving along. So here the ornament is light, it's dark behind it. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the little thin strand there. I'm not really going to paint around that because we'll just out. We'll put that in later. Um, just looking at light and dark. So it's dark behind the ornament here. We've got this little massive bright light that I kind of indicated with my outlines there. So I'm going to wash around that. Um, and I'm using a flat tip brush. These are Royal Langnickel brushes that I get from Dick Blick. Um, I really like these. And notice how far back I'm holding the brush. That's really, really important because it helps you to not get like too choked up and kind of rigid um, as you're laying down the color. It's better to have your hand further back. It just helps you to kind of see the bigger picture and to not try to get too detailed. All right, just putting in a little color there. All right, so I did outline some of the reflections in um, the ornament here, but not all of them. I just kind of wanted to outline the ones that really stood out to me the most. So I see a little bit of a large shape right here, kind of coming up. And we've got another little shape that comes around here. This is the outline of a bright highlight there. This is an outline right here of a dark shape. So sometimes I'm outlining the dark and sometimes I'm outlining the light. It's, it's kind of flips back and forth. Um, one little tip that I can give you when you're in this stage of your painting, even though I usually say never ever print your reference image because I always want you guys to look at your image on a screen, you can see the color so much better. In this stage, it would be okay to print your reference image in black and white. I know some of you guys do that already. Um, and that does kind of help you to just focus on the value. So value is light and dark. And that is what we are trying to look at right now. We're not worried about what the colors are in our painting. We're really just looking at light versus dark. That's what the underpainting is all about. Um, value is so, so important in a painting. Um, actually, I was listening to a podcast uh, this week that I really like that you guys might enjoy. It's called the Learn to Paint podcast. Highly recommend it. Um, but it was interesting because I was listening to several different instructors on the podcast. I listened to like three episodes in a row and every single one of the instructors said um, valued, a color gets all the credit, value does all the work. Like I, I don't know who coined that phrase originally, but it was, I thought it was very interesting that all of the instructors said the exact same thing. But it's so true. Um, if your values are correct in your painting, it almost doesn't matter what the colors are and your painting is going to make sense. So just uh, something to keep in mind as you're working. Those values are really, really important. All right. Yeah, I like listening to that podcast. It really gets my gears turning while I'm painting. It makes me think a lot about why I'm doing what I'm doing. There's just a lot of great insight on that podcast. All right, we've got a pretty large shadow of dark over in the bottom corner here. We're just going to wash that in. This is a relatively dark painting. We've got like some really intense light, but then a lot of the rest of it is quite dark. 
Um, so we're gonna be washing in a lot of shadow here. We've got these little lights, we've got little stems of the lights are dark, so I'm gonna find those because that's easy to spot right away. I always uh, say if you're a little bit lost in a painting, like we got a lot going on right here, a lot of these different needles and lights, whenever you feel a little bit lost, just find the shapes that are easy. This feels dark. Um, because that will give you anchor points to find everything else. So just start with the easy parts and then work your way into some of the more complicated areas. Um, so I found all those little lights. Um, this is an outline of a bright light, so I'm gonna paint around it to show that it is bright. So sometimes to make something bright, you just put everything else around it dark. Um, and it will result in making it light. Um, now our next step is going to be to come back and push the dark areas even darker. So we're going to separate some of these tones that we've kind of lumped together. We're gonna to separate them by pushing those dark tones um, just to the next level. So we'll still be just doing a value painting. We still will not be worried about the color at all. We'll just be looking at what can we make even darker. And yeah, I'm not gonna worry about going around all those little needles. I'm just going to kind of notice that this left lower left corner is kind of dark and I'm just kind of paying attention to the direction of these needles and just making my brush work kind of fit with that, but not worrying about painting around all those needles right now because that's just a lot of work and we don't need to do it. We can, we can bring those in later as highlights. So yeah, okay. I think that feels like a pretty good first pass. Um, so now, like I said, we're going to come back and make this color a little bit darker. Um, so by doing that, we're going to add more alizarin crimson and more Payne's gray to our purple uh, little puddle that we've got going here. So just mixing up more of the color. I'm still gonna thin it with some water, but I'm not going to thin it quite as much because we want this to be the next level. We wanna be able to see that this new recipe is a few notches darker than what we had before. So, okay, let's look and see. Now, where are the really easy dark spots to fill in? Well, I can see that it's pretty dark up here in this corner. Um, push that a little darker and I can tell it's pretty dark right here that's all pretty dark and one way that you can have like just really nice strong brush strokes is to not be afraid of having enough paint on your brush. That's one thing. And then another thing is just when you see an area, like I can tell I'm gonna put this in dark. When you see that that's dark, I'm not gonna do a bunch of little hashes. I'm just gonna go down and drop it in. So not being afraid to drop in those tones that you know that they go there. You know that that's where it's supposed to be. So don't tiptoe around it, just drop it in. You can see like I actually push my brush like into the panel. Um, and this is a wood panel. Uh, for me, I think that I can get the nice, clean brush strokes by having a smooth surface. I know some people like canvas, but I don't. <laughs> I really like just this nice, smooth surface. The only time I paint on canvas, you can see I have a canvas taped on the wall here behind me. The only time I paint on canvas, I paint on a specialty type of canvas that is not like a traditional artist canvas. It's called Art Cambric, and it's very thin. It's almost like a heavy paper, and it's super smooth. Um, if you're interested, I get it from Indiana Coated Fabrics, which actually is a company that makes like blinds, like, like window shades, but they think they discovered that artists like to paint on their surface, so they now have a line of um, paint surfaces. Art Cambric with a C. Um, so that's the canvas I use. Otherwise, I would never use like a heavy weave cotton 
um, canvas because it's just way too bumpy for me. I do not like it. But again, personal preference. That's, you know, you figure out what you like and then you get what you like. All right, this looks a little dark here. Again, I'm still just using the same uh, color recipe, alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. I don't have any white in here. This is just a wash. And I'm just pushing these shadows to kind of this like dark burgundy tone. Uh, thank you everybody for all your happy birthday wishes. You guys are the best. I can't even count how many people have wished me happy birthday today. It's been just lovely. Very, very nice. Feeling very special. All right. I even got two of my favorite artist friends here in Chattanooga who gave me some of their art, which is amazing. My, my friend Adrian Powell, who is a neighbor, student, friend, amazing, dropped off a print of, her, of hers today um, of the walking bridge, which was awesome. And she didn't even know it was my birthday. She just felt like she needed to bring me that print and it was such a nice surprise. And then I also got a really nice ornament from another local artist here, my friend Jamie Barks, who is awesome. Um, I got one of her bridge uh, ornament prints, so lucky me. I love getting art. All right, we're gonna push this in a little darker and then we're gonna be just about ready to move into the next step here, which is going to be our complementary color underpainting. I'm just kind of squinting. I think I need to make this area a little darker right here in between. This feels like a dark shape right there. Um, hi, Kathy's popping in to say happy birthday painting tomorrow. All right, well, I can't wait to see your painting, Kathy. All right, and Lolly in Canada. We have a lot of Canadian friends on today. That's pretty awesome. All right, I think I, think I have enough of this step. Okay, actually, let's bring in a little bit up here. This area up here feels a little too, too light there. Okay, so now, really important, before the next uh, wash of color, you want to make sure that all of your underpainting is dry. If you have any like wet, drippy areas, you do not want those to get pulled off when we do the wash of color in the next step. So hopefully yours is dry. Um, and for the um, underpainting wash, we're going to do complementary color. That means opposite on the color wheel. So in other words, if something is going to be painted very warm, like the ornament is gold, which is extremely warm, that means we're going to pick a cool color to lay down first. Um, and then in the background, we've got some cool tones poking through. So in those places, we're going to put a nice warm color down first. Um, so that is going to be just kind of fun to play with, layering those colors, um, and it's going to make the colors really pop. So that's the reason for it. Um, so let's decide what color are we going to do under our gold ornament, because I feel like this area is dry. I can probably wash this in first. And um, I would probably go straight to one of my favorite colors, Permanent Violet Dark. However, some of you know that this color has been out of stock for a while. Golden hasn't been able to make it because they couldn't get the pigment. So we're going to substitute two different colors to make this. We're going to use Quinopridone Magenta and Phthalo Blue Green Shade. So that will be a close substitute. It won't be exactly the same, but it's gonna be real close. And if you recently um, got into my uh, portrait painting class during my Black Friday sales, so many of you did, um, if you are in Features and Faces, my portrait painting class, you will notice that I use Permanent Violet Dark under faces as a wash, and if you can't get it, this is what you're gonna do instead. You're gonna do Quadocridone Magenta with a tiny, tiny little bit of Phthalo Blue Green Shade, and that makes a really pretty nice purple that is very close. So you can use that as a substitute if you're in Features and Faces and you're like, I can't find the Permanent Violet Dark. 
I understand. But I've heard it's coming back. I've heard within the next few months that we're gonna get that color back. So let's all cross our fingers because that is one of my favorite colors from Golden. But thank goodness we can still make it because we've got that quinacridone magenta. Now, if they stop making the quinacridone magenta, I'm just really gonna be in trouble, but let's not even think about that, okay? This is a nice purple that we've got going right here. So we're just gonna wash right over. You see I'm being loose. I am not worrying about edges. I'm just dropping this color in. Lovely, okay. Um, now I'm gonna look around and see where else do I see kind of this warm golden glow and I'm gonna drop this color in the same, in those places as well. So I see this golden glow right here. I see some over here. And we've got some right here. Just dropping it in. And definitely right here. So I'm just looking, where do I see gold, super warm tones? That's where I'm putting my purple in. Anywhere else? Okay, so over here, this is kind of more like a green tone. Opposite of green is red. But instead of going like straight red, I'm gonna play with it a little bit and I'm just gonna put the quinacridone magenta. Because uh, the quinacridone magenta is basically a red tone. It's just, um, it's a cooler red. So we're gonna drop that in over here. I'm just gonna wash it right in, pretty dark there. All right, so our goal is to basically not have any more white uh, canvas showing at all. Um, all right, we're gonna put a little more of that magenta in. I'm gonna put this wherever I see green. I'm gonna put the magenta in, I think. I'm also going right over the shadows. I'm not painting around those shadows that we washed in. I'm just dropping that in. Okay, now I want to bring in one more. Um, I want to bring in one more uh, wash of color just to fill in, make it a little different. And so I think for the rest of it, I'm going to do um, alizarin crimson with just a tiny speck of Hansa yellow opaque. Uh, you guys that paint with me often, you know this is my recipe for burnt orange that I really love. So just a tiny speck of the Hansa yellow opaque with the alizarin crimson is gonna make a nice kind of burgundy burnt orange and I'm gonna wash in the rest of the painting with that. So we wanna cover everything else up. Everywhere gets a wash, even if it already got that purple shadow wash from when we were blocking in our shadows. Even if it got that already, we're still gonna wash it in again with this burnt orange color. All right, so now this is pretty wet. Um, and again, we want this to be totally dry before we start layering any colors on top of it. So I'm going to um, just try to scoop up anything that feels a little bit, uh, a little bit wet to me. So this magenta is still a little wet. I'm just kind of scooping it up to help that to dry. Now, if I wasn't in the middle of teaching a class right now, I've said this before too, I would probably just walk away for 10 minutes maybe um, and just let this dry rather than trying to fight it. But since I'm teaching you guys right now and you don't want me to walk away for 10 minutes, um, I'm just gonna scoop it up and press on. But if you are watching the, uh, the replay, I would say just take a little break, let these colors set up, and then come back to it. All right. But this is gonna, this is what I love about acrylic paints. They dry so fast. I need a little more purple right here. I don't think I got any color on that, so I need to go back to my purple. Oh, it was over here. We're just gonna wash that in a little more. Sometimes uh, I know people who are really used to oil get frustrated with acrylic because they want to be able to blend them and they dry so fast. But I actually don't blend at all. Um, and maybe that's why they don't bother me. I don't really feel a need to blend. I just layer. You'll see. All right. So what we'll do next is we're going to push 
our darks a little darker. You can see when we did this wash of color, it kind of knocked everything down and now we don't have as much dimension. So we want to push it um, to bring that dimension back. So I'm going to mix up a nice dark. I feel like the camera looks a little bit blurry. I wonder if I could just wipe it off. Let's see if that made a difference. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> We're doing a little experimenting. Eh, that looks maybe a little better. Let's, 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 we're gonna say that's better. Okay, going back to the darks. So here's how we're going to make our dark. We're going to start with this dark green that's in the background. Um, and I'm going to make that using phthalo green blue shade. I need to get myself a little bit more. Phthalo green is a crazy intense color, so we're gonna have to knock it down a little bit. Um, phthalo green blue shade. And we're gonna put a little bit of white in there, just a tiny speck of white, because we, we actually, I mean like hardly any white actually, but we wanna gray it out just a pinch, just a pinch of white. Um, and then I'm gonna put some alizarin crimson in there, and the alizarin crimson is gonna knock down that green because red cancels out green, they're opposites, right? And now, instead of thinning my paint with water, now I'm going to start thinning it with glazing medium. So I'm using Liquitex matte medium. You can use any brand. I just use Liquitex because it's a little cheaper than Golden and I don't really feel like it matters um, so much for the brand. So um, Kathy says the screen's clear for her. Awesome, maybe it's just on my end. I'm looking at it on my computer as I'm uh, going here so that I can follow along and it might just be like my connection or something. I don't know. All right, so here we go. We added a little bit of glaze to thin it out. This is alizarin crimson, phthalo green blue shade, a tiny speck of titanium white. And we're going to start pushing this into the shadows. Now, the most important thing I can tell you is do not cover up all of your underpainting. Leave some room in between your brush strokes don't cover up all that red warmth that we put down because that is going to look really cool when it's sandwiched in with these other tones. And you can always go back and cover up more of the underpainting, but many of you know it's real hard to bring it back if you've covered it all up. So. I, I can't tell you guys how many times I hear um, people say that they overworked it and they got they covered up all their underpainting and they wish that it was if it, they wish they could bring it back. So that's why I know I say this a lot, but I feel like it's a good reminder um, because I know it's a struggle. I know that our brains just want to tell us to cover it up if the color doesn't seem to make sense. But remember, it's not about the color, it's about the value, light versus dark. That's what's going to make this image pop and that's what's gonna make it appear realistic looking. It doesn't matter if the colors are a little bit wild actually because our brain's gonna do the work and it's going to just pull it together and, and make it make sense. All right, hi Adrian. thank you very much. All right, so moving along here, still looking for these dark shapes. Again, remember these little lights are pretty easy to spot, so we've got the little stems of them that are very dark. We can drop those in nice and dark because we know that we know where they are because we transferred the outlines. So we're not second guessing like, is this light in the right place? We know exactly where the lights are. So we can drop these dark shapes in very confidently um, because we know where to find them. And another thing is if you put the light in the wrong place, nobody's gonna know. So when you're doing something like this, like these, like these Christmas lights, there is no right or wrong, really. Nobody really knows where the lights were in the reference image, so don't get too worried about that. Probably the most important thing to make sure that you get like right is to make sure that this 
ornament overall looks circular. Now it doesn't need to be like a perfect, smooth, round outline. In fact, it's probably better for it not to be, but you don't want it to be like overall seeming a little like lopsided. So that's probably the most important thing to worry about in this painting, but don't worry so much about if your Christmas lights are in the same places, because that can just kind of be free and loose. It's kind of like when you're painting somebody's hair, like nobody's really gonna know like exactly the way the hair fell on that person. You're just kind of getting the overall essence of it correct. Uh, just, all right, still adding some of this dark. It's a pretty dark painting like I mentioned earlier, so we've got quite a bit of dark to layer in here but we're getting there. I'm gonna make a little bit more of my dark. Again, it was alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, not Payne's gray, uh, phthalo green blue shade, little speck of white, and some glaze. And when I go back and mix a little bit more of it, it doesn't matter if I mix it exactly the same. So don't let that be an issue either. It's probably better if it's not exactly the same. That would be more natural, right? Yeah, so the second time around, I think I mixed this a little bit lighter, but that's actually kind of good. All right, where else do I see some dark? Right here. And... All right, I think that... I'm gonna put a little bit of dark on my ornament. I think that's good, okay. So now, um, let's actually use the same uh, puddle here, but we're gonna make this new lighter green for some of these needles. So I'm going to drop a little bit of yellow into it um, and a little bit more white. And we're gonna see what we get then. Maybe a little more glaze. Now I feel like it's a little too intense of a green, so I'm gonna probably need to add a little more of the alizarin crimson to knock it back down. Usually err on the side of making your greens duller than what you think that they should be because they will probably look more intense when you actually get them on your um, painting for whatever reason. Um, so I love green, but it really bothers me if you have like a green that you're trying to look natural and it's just like so intense, it like makes you feel uncomfortable. So I usually err on the side of making my greens a little bit duller. All right, we're gonna start putting some of this color in. Okay, so what's on my brush right now? It's alizarin crimson, phthalo green blue shade, Hansa yellow opaque, titanium white, and um, the glazing medium. All right, so let's start putting some color into the needles. The glazing medium is going to allow that pink underpainting to poke through. And remember, leave some spaces for that pink to just show up straight. You don't want to cover all of it up. Hi Judy, thank you for sharing. Thank you for reminding me to ask you guys, would you please share this demo? Um, would you just hit the share button and share it to your profile? Um, I would really be grateful. It helps uh, so many new artists to find me and be able to enjoy these free demos. Um, so I really appreciate it. You can always come right back to the demo. If you hit share right now, guys, you can just come on right back. You won't lose it. Um, and I will be super grateful. And it's my birthday, so you could do that for me for my birthday, right? <laughs> that was kind of like a cheap uh, <laughs> request, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyways. All right, thanks, thanks again, everyone. All right. So let's see, just drop in a little more in. Looking for those kind of large shapes of green, 
kind of working in like straight lines the way the needles would be. Thank you, Lynn, for sharing. All right, I'm squinting, looking for these large masses of color. And yeah, Actually, we've got a lot of green to put in. Uh, thank you, Julie, for sharing. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, tell me if you share it so that I can say thank you. Because sometimes Facebook will say, like, you know, you know, 50 people shared it or something, but they won't always tell me who it was. So if you tell me you shared it, I can be grateful to you. All right. I might come back and add more of this green later, but I'm just going to drop a little bit more in because I want to get going on the ornament. I feel like we're kind of in like the ugly, messy middle right now where it's, we're just making a lot of mid-tones, which are not all that interesting to look at, but we sort of have to go through this stage in order for those highlights to pop. So we put in like those super dark areas and now we're putting in all these blah mid-tones, but I promise you once we get to the the highlight stage, um, it's really gonna be pretty cool. We just have to, we gotta get through the messy part. The messy middle. All right, speaking of, let's, uh, let's be done with all that mud and let's start putting some glowing light on that ornament. So I'm going to start with the mid-tones of the ornament. So I guess I do have to put a little bit more of the blah right in here. <laughs> so um, as I squint, it's, the ornament is warmer on the right, it's cooler on the left where it's a little bit darker and then we have a cool highlight here versus a warm highlight here. We're gonna start with the cools. Um, and so I'm going to use Burnt Umber Light, which is a brown, cool brown, a little bit of white, and a little bit of glaze. Amy shared it three times. Ooh, extra points for you, Amy. Thank you. All right. I should have waited until we got to the really pretty part for you guys to share it, but it's okay. People start watching now, they'll uh, be able to see that part <laughs> too. Okay, I think we're just doing burnt umber, light, and white to start out with. We're gonna start putting some color in, and this is again, still kind of a muddy, boring color, but it's gonna be on top of that fun purple, so it's all right. I'm still leaving some little bits of that purple poking around. And yeah, now I'm gonna add some more white and put this cool highlight right there. Put more white into my burnt umber. And that highlight will drop in right there. Starting to give a little bit of dimension to our ornament here. A little highlight on the edge there. Uh, hopefully I can still keep this looking circular. Okay, now let's put some of the dark warm tones in. We've got like some dark right there. Um, and we're gonna make that with, um, we're gonna do burnt umber. And we're going to add some pyrrole red light and some Hansa Yellow Opaque. So those two are gonna make our burnt umber more of like a red, warm burnt umber. And we're gonna use that to put some of these darker um, shadows in on our ornament. So this will be a nice, really rich, warm, dark brown here. Yeah, you can see how this is much warmer than what we had before. And it's pretty warm over here. Squinting, let's see. It's pretty warm up here. Got a little warm tone on the top. Okay, we're almost ready to start putting those nice warm highlights in. I kind of showed a little indication of the swirl, like the swirl design that's on the ornament, but I just didn't really overdo it. I just showed a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna add that nice glowing highlight. 
Um, let's see, Jacqueline said, say that again. I'm not quite sure, Jacqueline, because we have a little bit of a delay, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you can just type in the comments what you're asking about, I'll try to get back to that. Okay, so the warm glowing highlight, that warm tone, we will make, uh, we need to get some more yellow. Um, and we're going to use the same recipe. So it was burnt umber light, pie roll red light, hence the yellow opaque, and now we're gonna add white to it. And we're gonna add more of the red and yellow to brighten it up as well. So we're gonna take some baby steps towards the lighter tone. So this is a little bit brighter, not like quite glowing bright, but we're gonna get there. Kind of gonna show my little swirl a little bit there on the pattern. You might need to switch to a smaller brush. I probably should have. Kind of twisting my brush to show that pattern. Uh, Jacqueline, the last colors. Okay, I think I just said it, so I think we're good. It was burnt umber light, hence the yellow opaque, pie roll red light, and now I've added some white to it. which is also my go-to recipe for skin tones. I just do it in like different uh, proportions, I guess. Get some highlights on the top here. I'm trying to get a little more specific, getting kind of close. You might want to switch to a smaller brush, maybe. I'm still using my number three brush. We'll drop some of these warm highlights over on the left side here. Okay, now I really want to start to make it pop. So we're, we really want to pull this out even brighter, but I want to let this dry a little bit. So before I do that, I'm going to take the same color that I'm using and I'm going to use it to drop in some warm glow, some, some warm glow around where the uh, Christmas lights are. And we'll push those Christmas lights even brighter later. So I'm not even gonna try to make it the shape of the Christmas light. I'm actually gonna go even bigger because I kind of have a halo effect around these Christmas lights. We'll, we'll shape them up a little bit more later. Um, there's kind of like, yeah, a halo. I guess I was trying to think if there was a better word, but halos, halo is the word of choice. That's what we're gonna use. Um, we've got some bouncing around on the needles. Those are kind of warm. Okay, got this. And here we've got a nice warm glow. This must be another ornament, but it's kind of, uh, it's not in focus. I think we got another one up here, so we'll drop that in. And yeah, just bouncing this color around. I think that's why one reason I like this composition, it's got like all these colors just bouncing off of each other. So I'm using this warm tone. It's reflecting on the needles. I think this is an artificial tree, so the needles are kind of shiny and reflecting the color as well. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy, for sharing. All right. Putting some more of this warm tone in. And now this is dry enough that we can come back and pop that out. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, because um, that other color was a little bit muddier and I want this next color to be cleaner. I want it to really stand out. Um, so we're going to make this new bright, color from, let's see, we're gonna do pie roll red, Hansi yellow opaque, and just a little bit of titanium white. I don't know if I'm gonna put any burnt ember in it now, because I, I really want this to stand out. Get a little more yellow. So maybe I won't. Well, let's, let's put this down and take a peek and see how it looks. All right. Well, it's kind of 
fun. Um, it's pretty bright. I don't know if I want to do it on everything, but I think some of this intense orange is going to be good. Kind of show off those little swirls. Yeah. We'll put some of this bright orange on our lights. Get those to start popping. So this color does not have any burnt umber in it. This is just the, uh, the pie roll red and the Hansa yellow opaque and white. And just finding those glowing lights. And then we'll come back and make them glow even more. Put some of the needles. There's a lot of color going on here. Um, oh, we've got a bright highlight up there. I'm like really working hard to not put all of my brightest highlights in right away. Gotta hold out until it's time. So I do my brightest highlights at the, towards the end, not the very end, but I try to hold out till I've built up a good base for them. Sometimes it's tempting to want to put like the candy on at the beginning. But you gotta wait. Wait till it's time. Okay. Uh, let's see, Kathy said, I realized I got an eight by eight for tomorrow's painting. These are eight by 10. Yeah, the other ornament demos were eight by eight. So my holiday series from last year, those were eight by eight, um, but I've since kind of switched my demos to all being eight by 10. Um, but you could always crop it. You could crop off the bottom part and just do the top. I think that would work. Okay, let's, let's make this even brighter now. So we're going to go back to the same puddle, but now I'm going to add more white. And I want to make sure my white's not contaminated. I have a little contamination in that puddle. So I'm going to get myself some fresh white uh, because I really want this to show up. And then I'm going to grab some yellow that is not contaminated. Make sure that your red, your yellow, and your white are not contaminated or it will kill your color. This is important. We don't want any brown or any blue or anything on the other side of the color wheel when we're trying to really make these colors stand out. Okay, so now this is a few notches brighter than what I had before. I'm gonna drop that in. Yep, you see how that's really standing out? I'm gonna lay it on top of what we had before. Try to get my little swirl in. And I, get a, I sometimes do choke up on my brush when it's necessary. Getting this little swirl in is gonna be necessary. And put that little dash in. Got a little highlight there. So there's gonna be a lot of dimension and drama on this ornament. This is pretty bright here. We got another little one there. And the reason that these little flashes of light are standing out is because we built up all that base before. Um, so we're gonna keep moving along, get a little highlight here. So these are like the lights from the ornaments that are reflecting onto the bulb. And we're gonna push it even more but we're gonna work our way towards it. Gotta make that brighter. And now I'm just gonna start to kind of pay more attention to the shape of the little Christmas lights in the background because I'm not just doing like the halo around them, now I'm actually doing the little bulb, so I kind of have to twist my brush to get in. I probably should switch to a smaller brush. I'm gonna switch down. I'm having a little trouble getting that shape otherwise. 
So now I'm using my number one brush. This is still one of the flat tip brushes from Royal Langnickel. I think I can, it's probably just the right size for the lights here. And make sure that your, this, this bright yellowy tone is not contaminated. Make sure you don't have any brown in there because that will deaden your color. Okay. Also, I wanna let you guys know a little reminder, all of the 2021 paint along downloads, so like the templates to trace, they are all available on my website through December 15th, but then they are no longer going to be available. So if there are any paint alongs from all of 2021 that you still want to grab for $10 on my website, you can watch those videos anytime. So the videos are not going away. It's just the um, templates that you can download and trace. Those are only gonna be available to purchase through December 15th, which is coming up pretty soon. So definitely head over there, check that out, get any that you still want to grab. All right. Um, now let's go back and push this one more notch brighter. We're gonna get more bright white and more clean yellow. And it's gonna be mostly white and yellow now. I need to get some clean yellow. Mine was a little, getting a little dirty there. So this is gonna be mostly white and yellow with just a speck of the pie roll red in it to warm it up a pinch. And we're gonna get those really bright tones on the ornament. Uh, okay, so where is it the very brightest? Looks like right about there. Just a couple dashes. We don't wanna put this brightest tone everywhere because then it kind of loses its impact. We just wanna put it where we see those super bright highlights. It's pretty bright right here. And we can push these little bulbs, we can push those a little brighter. So we just keep layering color and that's how it gets so bright because we've built up a lot of color here, um, which will make it really nice and bright. And we're gonna need to come back and put some more color into the background to cool it down a little bit because we just have mostly really warm tones right now and I need to balance that out with some cool. it feels just a little too much warmth. Warmth can be a good thing, but I like to have a balance. All right, so let's put a cool highlight right here on the bulb. So do you remember our, our cool was burnt umber and light? Let's go back to that, uh, burnt umber and white. Um, and that was it, I think. So we're gonna just put a little more white in with our burnt umber and make that cool highlight a little bit brighter. Let's see if we can push, oh, we need to go more white. Needs to stand out a little bit more. Yeah. Just a few dashes of that. Maybe a little along the edge here. Okay, I think. Ooh, I, did, I don't like that brush stroke. Don't copy me on that one. It feels a little, like this needs to come out a little further, but then it gets darker. So I'm gonna put a little more burnt umber back into it and just extend. The shape feels like too much of a blob. It needs to be a little more elongated right here. Sometimes you just do like one too many brush strokes. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like you just, but you can always fix it. So don't worry, I do it too. Okay, I'm gonna stop that because I'm getting a little carried away there. I'm gonna come back with just 
one bright dash of cool, and then I'm gonna keep moving. So I'm gonna get all frustrated right there. I don't want to. <laughs> all right, so let's go back, put some more color in the background needles. Um, let's put some highlights on these needles right here because we haven't really done that and those seem to be pretty bright. I'm gonna go back to my slightly larger brush and our green uh, that we're going to go back to, I'm gonna make a new green. So I'm going to use Thalo Green Blue Shade um, and some white and more white um, and then Hansa Yellow Opaque and I'm going to Grab myself some more Burnt Umber Light to tone down this green so that it's not so intense. You could use Burnt Umber Light or you could use a red, either one. They both are opposite on the color wheel. They both have some red in them, so either one would work. I'm gonna put some more white in here and maybe a little more Burnt Umber and some glazing medium to thin it out. So I want this new green to be quite a bit brighter than what we've got there. All right, so where do I see it the brightest? Definitely around here. I think that this needs to be more yellow. I'm gonna add a little more yellow to it because it's got this super warm light on it. So I'm gonna do more yellow and more brown to warm it up. I had a little too much of the phthalo green. And you guys know phthalo green is just a crazy intense color. So you need very, very little of it to really have it impact the color of what you are painting. As I'm doing the needles to get like a skinny stroke, I'm turning my brush the long way. That's what I like about these, um, these brushes is you can get a fat stroke or you can get a nice skinny stroke depending on the direction of your brush strokes. So they're very versatile. Um, Getting to your comments here. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, haven't really had too many questions in this demo. I feel like I haven't had a lot of questions lately because I have so many of you that watch all these demos and you're like, becoming experts. You don't, you don't even need to ask questions anymore. You've watched so many of them. <sighs> All right, we've got some of this green up here. Yeah, this is, this looks good. We needed to brighten up that background green. Just kind of have some other colors playing around in there. Kind of offset all that magenta. We had a lot of magenta. And we'll put some up here. I might do a little bit more of this green than what I actually see, because I just feel like it's good, although I don't want to overdo it. Um, one thing I will say is don't make all of your um, needles like evenly spaced because that can be kind of a giveaway that something is a little uh, artificial if you do that. So remember to kind of leave like random amounts of spacing in between your brush strokes. That's kind of important. All right, let's add a little more white and just pull out some of these a little bit lighter. A little more dimension in there. So I just put more white into my same recipe. And I'm just gonna add a few highlights where it's gonna be a little cooler and a little bit brighter. So you, whenever you add white to a color, it will make it cooler. So it'll both make it brighter and cooler. So one way to make a color brighter and warmer would be to add yellow especially in opaque yellow, like Hansa Yellow Opaque. Okay, 
All right, that's enough of the green. I've got those blue highlights in the background here that we haven't done yet, and I think that's gonna look really pretty just to offset all of this, all these warm tones. So um, I'm going to use some phthalo blue green shade um, and some white, and we're going to dull it down with a little bit of alizarin crimson. So alizarin crimson works nicely for dulling colors down. Um, and then a little bit of glazing medium. And we're gonna start with this a little bit darker and then we're gonna work our way towards these real bright highlights there. And then we're just gonna wrap it up for tonight. I could probably keep going on this one, but uh, I don't wanna be too late getting home on my birthday. <laughs> All right, I lost you guys for a second there. My phone was ringing. My brother was calling me. Um, sorry about that, but I just put in a little bit of blue here and I'm going to just, actually I see some kind of purpley blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of quinacridone magenta to my blue and I'm gonna drop some of that into some of those shadows before I make this blue any brighter. So I put a little quinacridone magenta in that same recipe and I'm just gonna drop a little bit of that into some of these shadows. It's just kind of fun to uh, just cut into some of that really intense warm color that we had going on with all that uh, underpainting. So this is just gonna kind of change it up a little bit. All right, so I think that's good. Now let's brighten up this blue with the um, Phthalo blue, green shade, and white. So we'll go back to, let's find a new clean spot right here. Phthalo blue, green shade, and white. And let's put a speck of phthalo green in there too. We're gonna make it more like an aqua. Um, I need a little more clean white. All right, that looks like a fun color. This is really gonna pop, just putting this little bit of this bright blue in the background. I think it'll be really fun. Let's see. Yeah, that's cool. All right, put a few dashes of that. I'm gonna run it off the top just to kind of make it look like it keeps going. Even though I don't really see it that bright up there, I feel like it needs to keep going. And I want to also balance it out by putting this color over here as well. And maybe a little dash of it around in the background there. You do, I don't really wanna have like a super intense color in just one spot because it will kind of make the painting feel like something's not quite right. So you kind of need to like balance it somewhere else. Um, so that's what we did there. Um, and now I want to come back with just straight white in a couple of places. I'm going to get my brush really, really clean, totally clean. I'm going to wipe it off really well. And I'm going to give myself some brand new white that has no other colors in it. And I'm going to come back with my straight white and put a little flash on my ornament in the very brightest spot, just like one little spot, maybe two. All right, super bright there. Where else do we see it super bright? Maybe there's a little offset in our cool highlight. I think I'm gonna put a little dash of bright right there. And then we'll put this bright white in a few spots on our Christmas lights. Not all of them, just a few. You don't, you don't want all of your lights to be like the same level of bright. I need a smaller brush, I can't get in there with this. Okay, almost done, almost done. I asked my kids to wait for me to eat dinner until I got home and so I know they're like anxiously waiting. <laughs> I was like, I don't wanna eat by myself. <laughs> All right, should we put it in this blue background? I feel like it needs to be a little bit blue. Let's put a little white into that blue and then do that highlight. I don't think it should be straight white. So we'll just do, yeah. Oh, 
Okay. I think we need to be done. All right. Um, let's see. Adrian's saying, are you going to put the red highlights in? Yeah, yes, I should. Yes. Thank you, Adrian. Let's do that. So let's put the pie roll red. See, I just need like an extra 20 minutes on this demo. Need my pie roll red. Yeah, let's do that. Pie roll red, white, and just a little speck of pansy yellow opaque, I think. Pie roll red, a little bit of white, just a tiny speck of white though. Mostly the pie roll red, and we're gonna put a little dab of pansy yellow opaque, and let's put those in as well. So where do we see that bright red? Well, we see it right here. A little more red in there. And we see a little dash of it right there, maybe up there. And we also do kind of have like a few in the background and around our lights, and that's really fun. Okay, I'm gonna put a little more yellow in it. All right, thank you, Adrian. You got me on that one. You were, uh, you spotted it. We did need that extra warmth. That is really cool. Yeah, just a little extra. We put some flash of it up there. Yeah, I like it. Um, I might do a little bit more of that when I have a little more time. You guys have more time than I do. So maybe you're gonna add a little more, but don't get carried away with the red because you could overdo it. I need to be done. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Thank you everyone who shared this demo. Please, if you haven't done it yet, I would be super grateful if you would hit that share button. Just let your friends know this is something kind of cool and fun to watch, especially those that are interested in learning some painting techniques, learning how to paint loose and bold and fun. So thanks again. Um, you can still grab the outlines for this demo on my website, along with all of my 2021 demos. Um, those are available through December 15th only. Um, thanks everyone. Have a great night and I will see you next week. Take care.